Hi guys, here we go with protists um, and today we're really just going to focus in on the animal like protists um, and we'll do the fungus and plant like protists with another uh, video. So we're just going to start with some protists and we can see some pictures of some protists that you might have actually seen when you did your microscope slides the other day. This is a slide of dinoflagellates. This is a paramecium. Here is Volvox, and I know the Volvox that you guys saw was red, but Volvox does contain chlorophyll, so it's a plant-like protist, and it actually shows up green unless you dye it with a certain dye that causes it to be red. And this is Giardia. Not all of these are plant-like or animal-like protists, but I just thought the pictures looked good, and that would be a fun place to start. So let's get right into it. So what makes a protist a protist? As we read in class, we went through the section 20.1, and there are some unique characteristics that make a protist a protist. So what I'd like you to do is write down some things based on 20.1, which is in your book on page 371 and 373, that make a protist a protist. And once you're done, come on back. All right, so I'm hoping that you guys wrote that, number one, they have to be eukaryotic. So that's off the bat. We know that they have to be a eukaryotic cell. The other thing is they really are considered not to be a plant, a fungus, or an animal, although they are eukaryotic. Um, nutritionally, they're probably one of the diverse um, groups of organisms, and they range from being able to be heterotrophic and absorb heterotrophic and ingest or autotrophic. So their nutritional um, range, if you will, is really, really large. The other thing that makes them um, fairly unique is that they're, for the most part, they're mostly asex or asexual reproduction. They reproduce asexually. There are going to be some situations where they reproduce sexually, and that would be under harsh conditions, um, um, when the population of protists is going up, and so forth and so on. So those are some things that make um, protists a little bit unique. Now, there are some classification um, things that are still being worked out. So we're going to simplify this and I'm just going to show you a few ways that um, other people have classified protists. This first way is based on their nutrition and if you look at these blue kind of forks if you will, these are heterotrophs but they don't have any particular um, mode of locomotion. So they don't have cilia, they don't have flagella, they don't have uh, pseudopod. So these, again, they're heterotrophic, but they don't have any way to move around. And these are some groups that you'll actually find if you look on page 372 of your book, that these are some things that are listed there. These protists are photosynthetic. These are photo, or excuse me, heterotrophic with flagella non-motile spore forming and heterotroph with restricted um, mobility. So that's just one way that you can kind of classify um, protists. And again, I'm not expecting you to be able to take a bunch of protists and know exactly where they're going to be. I'm going to tell you how we're going to just mentally um, place them. But I wanted you to see how some people actually classify them. Because I love concept maps so much, this is one that I really like and I would actually recommend kind of thinking about it in this way. It could potentially make it a little bit easier for you. So if we take the group of protists and we break them into ones that are heterotrophic and ones that are autotrophic, which means that they're producers, we can kind of classify them into either group. Okay, so it's almost like I'm making a dichotomous key here. Are they heterotrophic? Yes, they go here. If they're heterotrophic, the next question I would ask is, can they move? If they can move, I'm going to put them here. Okay, and these are some examples of protists that actually have that type of movement. If they can't move, but they're heterotrophic, these are some examples here. Okay, for the most part, but there's some exceptions, everything that's in purple here would be fungus-like protists again, fungus-like protist, because they're heterotrophic and they can't move, for the most part. 
Here we'd have our animal-like protists that can move and are heterotrophic. And then everything that is a producer or an autotrophic protist would be considered a plant-like protist. So phytoplankton, diatoms, dinoflagellates, euglenoids, green algae, algae, seaweed, red algae, ground algae, all of these are plant-like protists because they actually do photosynthesis and they're autotrophic. So I would actually recommend um, kind of jotting this down and using this as your guide. So this particular video is really just going to focus in on the heterotrophic animal-like protists, which are these right here. So that's what we're going to focus in on. So if we look at those um, protists, we would we definitely already have said that they need to be um, eukaryotic. Most of them are unicellular. There are some examples of protists that are multicellular. So you're not going to find in this group that we can say 100% of the time that you know they're all of this we're starting to bridge the gap of some other organisms like here so I want you to kind of keep that in your mind. They have nuclei again because they're eukaryotic and they have membrane bound organelles and for animal like protists they'll either have cilia or flagella there are even some plant like protists and fungus like protists that will have some flagella. These are our two different types of nutrition and like we said before they reproduce asexually and sometimes they can reproduce sexually. So based on that concept map that we just looked at just a second ago, how could we informally classify protists? So take a moment to kind of fill this out and then come on back. Okay, so our first group should be heterotrophic and the next thing next to it is specifically about that heterotrophic um, nutritional status and they're heterotrophic that absorb heterotrophic here that ingest and the last one down here would be autotrophic so those are our three different nutritional types autotrophic heterotrophic absorbing and heterotrophic ingesting so here's another concept map that I threw together um, here's our animal like protists and we can put four groups here we could put examples here and we could put examples here. So you could actually take this and say okay well what would I put in those boxes and see if you can kind of go back to that original concept map look at this one and see if you could plot or put in some items into here and that would be a great way to study. So sometimes we actually take an animal like protus and the prefix for animal is zoo the prefix for first is proto. So if I actually said the word protozoan, protos first, zoo, it would be animal. This would be, what's the first animal? So the first animal is th all the different types of animal-like protists. So the animal-like protists would be ciliates, flagellates, ciliates, flagellates, pseudopodia, and no movement. So those are the four groups that we would actually put are the, all the different types of protozoans that do different types of movement. So here's an example of a zooflagellate. They can move with um, flagella, of course, right? Um, they reproduce asexually and they can be free living or parasitic. So here's Giardia. Giardia can be found in water. Specifically, we can actually find it in New Hampshire in the untreated water. So if you were to drink something, you could actually get this particular protus and they would attack and basically paras be a parasite in your intestines and they can give you really bad diarrhea without getting too graphic, but you can get really sick with that. So that's one type of animal-like protus that moves with flagella. Another protist that moves with pseudopod is an amoeba and we actually looked at one with our microscopes today. So clearly they move with uh, pseudopod, they reproduce asexually and they usually are free living in ponds and streams. This is an example a picture of an amoeba and this is just some different boxes here that you could use to try, try to label. That would be a food vacuole, the, this is a pseudopod that's going around to engulf that food. 
little contractile vacuole. This, of course, would be the nucleus. The outside would be a um, plasma membrane. And if you're pointing to both of these, they would be pseudopod. And then this one would be the cytoplasm. Ciliates are another animal-like protists that move by cilia. They reproduce asexually. Occasionally they can do conjugation, which is a form of their um, sexual reproduction, and they also are free living. So I have a picture here that's very, very similar to one that's in your textbook. So if you look on page 379 in your textbook, what I'd like you to do is take some moments right now, draw out a paramecium in your notes, and kind of label, not kind of, <laughs> label the boxes and what each one of those things are and um, I also would like you to know what each one of those things does. So you might have to refer back to the text for that. So I'll take a moment, label all of these things, use the uh, figure 20.13 on page 379 and that will help you out. Our last protist that's animal-like that doesn't move is the category of AP complexins. They don't have any type of mobility, they reproduce um, by a complex um, process and this is actually highlighted on page 378 in your text textbook and these are parasites. This picture is a little bit similar to what um, is in your textbook and a classic disease that is considered an AP complex in is the protist named plasmodium and plasmodium actually causes malaria so that's of course something that we don't want to get but they reproduce both sexually and a um, sexually, so the reproductive cycles are a little bit different than some of the other ones, and it usually involves two or most host um, species. Here, one of the host species um, would be, of course, human, and then here, right down here, you can't really see it, is a mosquito, and there's a mosquito here. So, um, malaria, the disease, is caused by plasmodium, and that protist is um, lives within the mosquito and us and actually reproduces and just keeps the process keeps going over on and on and on and on and on. So that's the animal-like protists in a nutshell. Um, I'll have another video for you guys that is on plant-like and fungus-like. So I hope you take some time to review some of this and actually see if you can fill in some of those concept maps like this one would be a great one to study and I really think this is a fabulous one to kind of organize your thoughts especially if you are a visual learner. So I hope that that helped and I will see you guys soon.